Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to take a look at this 2014 Mercedes-Benz C300. This little C300 came from another shop and apparently they've taken the front cover off and resealed it and they put a timing chain on it. And when they were done with the work, the car runs really rough at idle, but I guess off idle it runs fine. There's no DTC set, but it's running rough. So the other shop says they're absolutely positive that they got the, the cam chains on correct and the cams are in time. So it's over here for us to diagnose why it's running rough. So the first thing I want to do is get a scan tool and get some basic data. So let's go ahead and get that scan tool connected to this little Mercedes. Okay guys, I got the scan tool set up. So right away, I can see I have a major fuel trim problem on bank two. We're stoichiometric on both banks, but bank two is taking away a large amount of fuel, and the bank-to-bank -bank fuel trim is 28% right now. That's a huge bank-to-bank -bank difference, and it's alerting you that it's in red. The vacuum seems to be okay at 14.27, and I'm a mile high. I'm 5,500 feet, so this vacuum is about what I would expect at this elevation. Maybe I would see 16, but 15, 16, I'm not way out. Okay, so now what I want to do is let's take a look over here. Okay, so we're taking away 28% right now. 28% between banks. There's something wrong with bank two. Bank Let's one piece. Let's look at DTCs. No codes have been set. Just like he said, he wasn't setting a code. And he says if he missed the cam chain, this car would find it because it's a Mercedes and they know how to find their cam chains. And I know that's not true, so. Okay guys. So what I'm worried about now, right off, is bank two. Is my fuel control really being held correctly? It just doesn't seem like my vacuum is bad enough to be that they didn't get the cams on. I am taking away a lot of fuel right here. Now what would happen if the, if the RAF sensor wasn't working correctly? So I want to get my gas analyzer and I want to check this first. So let's go ahead and get that gas analyzer set up and let's make sure that this is correct, that I've got good fuel control and it's really right that I've got, this says I'm stoichiometric. So the gas analyzer has got to say that this bank is stoichiometric or I have a problem. Okay, we're going to take the exhaust probe and we're going to put it in bank two. Now let's go get some exhaust gas data. Okay guys, I got a gas analyzer and my my scan tool up. Let's take a look. So I have a big fuel correction. Let's go to the gas analyzer. And what I want to do is I want to go to multi-tool and now I can pick any of the data that I've got up. So basically what I want over here is I want long term on one and long term on two. So on bank two I'm taking away 31% right now and I'm taking away 1% on bank one. We go to the controls, we're going to start to measure, that starts the pump, so the pump is bringing in the gases into the machine. So right now, the tailpipe probe is in bank two, and I have a lambda of one. And let's go here. So here we've got this, and down here, we can go ahead. So this is lambda for bank two. This is the lambda out of the tailpipe, and we can see that they're the same. So that is in control, guys. The, the RAF sensor is working. I have to take away 31% to fix this car. Now, without a gas analyzer, how on earth would you know that? You don't. You're guessing. This is where this really becomes a valuable tool to check your trims because something's really crazy where I have 31% takeaway on bank two. I have no codes. So wow, really I have a huge takeaway with no codes. But what we now know is my lambda is matching tailpipe. So I had to take away 31% to get lambda. Now we can go over here and we can get the lambda for bank one. 
So this is bank one's lambda. So bank one and bank two both have good lambda. Now this is showing I have some misfires. This gas analyzer, even though you have cats on it, will show misfires through the cat because the way I've made the cell. The HC cell is very small, which makes it very accurate. So I shouldn't have 130 on my 8C here. So what I want to do now is I want to change the tailpipe probe to the other tailpipe and just see what my readings are. But on bank two, I've got a lambda of one and I've got somewhat of a misfire with 120 parts per million. It's not a bad miss, but I've definitely got a miss. And I've got pretty good conversion at 14.5. So wow, this is a pretty crazy problem right now, guys. Let's move that tailpipe probe just because I want to see what the other side's going to do. Now we're going to put the gas analyzer in bank one. Let's go see what the readings are. Okay, guys, this is the reading from bank one now. I have a worse misfire on bank one. I have 242 rather than 120 but I still have a lambda of one. <coughs> my conversion's not as good, my CO2 is dropped. My HC is higher, my conversion isn't as good, but my lambda is still close. I'm about 4%, 3 to 4% rich, and this is bank one. But okay, now I've got a dilemma. Why in the world would bank one show more HC with less conversion? unless I have a cat problem. Okay, so let's just go look here. This scan tool can do this for me. Go to cat efficiency, start the test. We're going to start the test. This is bank one, this is bank two. Okay, look at bank one. The, the rear O2 is moving. So bank one, the cat's no good. Yeah, the cat's definitely weak on bank one. And this is just sitting here idling, guys. If we went and drove it, it'd go to the floor, I'm sure. So the reason the gas analyzer is giving us that data is because bank one's cat's no good. Okay, so that's crazy. Let's go back out here. Let's read the codes. <coughs> no codes. So let's read permanent codes. So our permanent codes catalytic converter bank one efficiency below threshold. So the code has been set but probably the shop has cleared them. And here we've got bank two is too rich and we know that because we're trying to take away 30 percent almost. And the intake air temperature sensor has high output. Probably they had it disconnected. But currently, I don't have those codes. Those are permanent codes. Let's go to mode six. Okay, so we're really not seeing misfires in mode 6 register. And it doesn't really feel like it's missing that bad either. It's a little rough, but it's not real rough. But it's rougher than the Mercedes should be. But I don't really show misses. I've got a couple of misses on cylinder 5, and that's on bank 2. But nothing like I would think if a cam was out of time, right? But we definitely have a cat that's no good. And here it's showing me that the cat has low efficiency and I have a code in permanent codes.
Okay, so clearly the cat's no good here. Now, since we ran this cat test, I need to go ahead and shut this off. We need to go back to PIDs and I need to enable all the PIDs again. Now we're going to go over here and we can see I'm taking away 31% and I'm in the tailpipe for bank two, but they're going to share some gases. But I got a lambda of one and I'm taking away 31%. So obviously it's got to take away 31% in order to correct the fuel mixture. So both banks are reading, I'm, I'm, these numbers right here for how much I'm taking away are, are accurate. So I have a problem with bank two. So before I go chase down a rabbit hole, I want to make sure that they got these cams in time. Sometimes the chains aren't that easy. So let's go ahead and get some pressure transducers on this car so we can see what's going on. Okay guys, I came out to get some pressure transducer readings on this Mercedes. And what I, all I wanted to do is take a couple of spark plugs out so I could get in cylinder readings to compare them. And it works really good. But you know, a typical Mercedes, rather than having this as some kind of cover that just unbolts or pops out of the way, this cover that's over this is the intake. And this is three hours to get the spark plugs out. I want to, I just want to diagnose this car. Really? I mean, this is just typical Mercedes. That's why I hate working on these cars. I mean, can you imagine to get the spark plugs is three hours because I got to take off an intake, not some cover? That's where I'm at, guys. So I'm going to show you an advanced technique that I've developed. I'm going to use the vacuum and a tailpipe pressure transducer and we're going to check to see if these cams are in time or out of time and it works pretty accurately. So let me go ahead and get that test set up. Pipe pressure transducer, I'm going to use the ATS pressure, the Venturi because it's running. Okay guys, this is the main vacuum line behind the throttle plate, that's what I need. I'm going to take the vac vacuum pressure transducer and I'm going to connect it right here. Hey guys, I removed the air filter here so I have access to the coils. This is the number one coil. So I put an E-COP. This is a ignition pickup so I can do a coil on plug. So now I'm picking up this signal and I've got it on channel 2 red. Okay, so we got the pressure Okay, so we got the pressure transducers connected, so we got to set the scope up. On channel 1 we have the tailpipe sensor, so it's 25 inches of water. On channel 2 we have the ignition, so I'm going to go to 20 volts, get a better waveform. And on channel 4 I am going to go to 30 inches, that's the intake manifold pressure. So I want to zero the two. We're going to invert the ECOP and zero it. So now we're ready to get data. So let me go ahead and get this car started. Okay guys, let's collect some data. So we don't have anything on, on channel 3, so I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. Now we're going to get the data. So here's the data from the two pressure transducers and the number one cylinder's ignition coil. So we've got some data, let's go ahead and process this. I want to get my zoom window. I want to get a couple of ignition coils. Now I'm going to get my, my cursor. And I want to put a cursor through each ignition coil strike. That's cylinder one to cylinder one. That's two complete crankshaft revolutions or one complete fire cycle. Now we need to mark that. So I need a firing order. Firing order is 14, 25, 36. But while we're here, notice cylinders one, two, and three are bank one. And cylinders four, five, and six comprise bank two. Okay, so now we need to pick the firing order. I want the intake first. We want to look at it first. Pull this down. I want this waveform as big as I can make it so we can see it easier. Now I want to go ahead and I want to smooth this. And I want to just smooth the pressure transducers. Okay. So now we're going to mark it. 
Okay, that's cool, guys. Look at this. Cylinder five drops vacuum. Cylinder three pulls the vacuum back up. Cylinder six opens and drop the vacuum. Cylinder one builds the vacuum back up. Cylinder four drops vacuum. Cylinder two pulls the vacuum back up. Cylinder five, six, and four all drop vacuum when the valve actuation occurs. That's bank two. Cylinders three, one, and two all hold the vacuum. That's bank one. Now that's only part of the test, guys. At the same time the engine's running with the same waveforms, we now want to look at the exhaust in the same way. So this is the exhaust. So now we're going to come over here. We're going to mark exhaust and mark it. Okay, that's cool. Look at that. We have a pressure push on six, a pressure push on four, and a pressure push on five. Look at how we're building pressure. If this pressure transducer goes up, it's more pressure, and if it goes down, it's more vacuum. But here we've clearly got a pressure pulse, pressure pulse, pressure pulse. That indicates to me that the exhaust cam is opening too early and it's pushing some of the pressure out into the exhaust. This clearly looks like the cam is out of time to me, guys. Let's go back over here and we're going to just take a quick look at, again, at the intake. Just change it back to intake and mark it. Real easy to do this. Five drops vacuum, six drops vacuum, four drops vacuum. Three builds and holds, one builds and holds, and two builds and holds. Bank one is building and holding vacuum, and bank two is dropping vacuum. Now, again, that's only half the equation. The other half is down here on the exhaust. Let's go ahead and remark this one just so we can take another look. And again, we can see where three is maintaining one is maintaining and two is maintaining and I have a strong push on six, four, and five. Okay guys, to me this indicates that the bank two cams are out so I want to do one more test to confirm this. I want to get an ignition waveform from bank one and an ignition waveform from bank two. If this is true, bank two should have more turbulence than bank one. So let me get that test set up where we can compare the ignition waveforms from bank one and bank two together. Channel two, red, goes to cylinder one, bank one. And okay, channel three, green, is going to cylinder five. There's a coil down in there, guys. It's really tight. I barely got that E-cop down in to get on the coil. Okay, I've got the E-cop set up. I've used the dual screen so we can compare them better. The red trace is on cylinder one, bank one. The green trace is on cylinder five, bank two. We can clearly see that we have way more turbulence on bank two rather than bank one. Look at the end where the tail of the end of plasma is having so much problem firing due to the turbulence. So once again, this is one more piece of data that conclusively shows that we have a cam out on bank two. Okay guys, what I got to do now is I got to check the VCT solenoids and how much they're being commanded. Now right away, both cams have adaption, so it's changing both cams right now. And we can see the amount that they're changed right here, but what I'm worried about is if it's overdriving one of those and it's pulling the cams closer in to target than they really are. I want to be able to tell the shop how far off these are. Always make sure that you check the VCT with a scope or a scan tool. I was going to get the scope data, but it's at the end of the day, and I've got an appointment that i got to get to, so we're just going to do this with a scan tool. It'll get me close enough to where I need to be. I can see that the computer is adapting to make the cams as close as it can. And we know that they're not more than 10 degrees out because it's not setting codes. Okay, guys, is that a cool diagnosis or what? This is a real advanced way to do this. I'd rather not do this. I'd rather be in the cylinders. But when it takes over three hours to get the spark plugs out, I gotta do a way that I can just get the car diagnosis and I can feel confident with my diagnosis. You've seen the procedure we've gone through. This is a pretty good confirmation 
with many different tests that are showing bank two's cams are out. So that's what I believe is wrong. This car is gonna go back to the shop that brought it and they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna tear it down to fix it. Hopefully I'll be able to get over to that shop and finish this video. But if I can't, we at least see the diagnosis. Now what I wanna show you is the diagnosis that's completed. But I'll have to just wait to see if I can get over to the shop when he tears it down. If you guys use scopes, you too will have good troubleshooting in your bays. Okay guys, we're over at the shop. The shop is taking the front apart to verify the cam timing and the exhaust cam on bank two is positively off. Now it's really hard to see the mark, but right, right down in here there's a mark and it doesn't line up with the top of the head. Now all the rest of the cams line up. The other, but this is definitely off. Now let me tell you the story. Now that I'm over here talking to the shop, the, cu the customer supplied three phasers, not four. Three new phasers. So this is a new phaser, this is a new phaser, and this is a new phaser. And since the noise was coming from bank one, the phaser noise was coming from bank one, that's probably why it ruined the cat on bank one as well, because the phasers were no good. So they, they kept the, they left the phaser on bank two on the exhaust. They didn't replace it because he didn't supply it. And they said that there wasn't any noise from bank two. The noise was coming for bank one. So now the customer is bringing another new phaser and they're gonna get that phaser on. And when they get this all set up, we'll come back and we'll take a look at this to show you what the difference is. Okay guys, we're back over at the shop. They finally have fixed this little Mercedes. They put a new phaser on it and got all the cams in time. Let's take a look at the data. The first thing I want to do is I want to look at the scan tool. Notice that both banks are centered and we're stoichiometric. We are fuel trims are good. And my bank to bank trim is good now. My vacuum is good. So all of my data looks good. But let's take a better, let's take a closer look at the digital. Okay, so we got short term for one is three, long term on one is three, short term on two is zero, short, long term on two is three. So not 31, three. Long term on back two is good now. Let's look at our gases. We're picking up the gases out of, out of the bank two. Notice that the 8C is about half of what we had before. The NOx is about a quarter of what we had before. We still have very good conversion at 14.58. All the oxygen is being used. So these are really good numbers. Everything is good and we're not having incomplete combustion now. Let's take a look at the, at the scope. So I've already set up the pressure transducers. I've got the tailpipe pressure transducer on one yellow, the ignition on channel two red, and the vacuum transducer on blue, and I've got that on four. Let's turn green off because we're not using it. Let's go ahead and get some data. Okay. We'll come in and look at the exhaust first. That was the one that had really crazy pulses. We'll blow it up really big like we did before. Now we're going to mark it. Exhaust. Okay, now we can see that all of the exhaust pulses are even. I want to do one more thing. Let's go ahead and smooth this data. Okay, so look at how even they all are now. Each exhaust push is very even. They all look real good. I don't have one, every other one popping way up high because the cams are in time now. Now, let's take a look at the intake. Same thing, we'll blow it all the way up so we can see it like we did before when it was out. I'm gonna mark that, just change it to intake. And we can see that each pole is even and I'm not dropping every other one. The intake poles are very even. This looks good. The car was absolutely out of time. The car is fixed, guys. It's incredible what you can do. 
with a scope and some pressure transducers, isn't it? Look at that, the car is fixed. Look at the trims, they're all great. The gases are good. The waveforms on the, on the scope are good. The cam was out of time, the exhaust cam on bank two. We saw that when we went over and recorded the data and now it's all fixed. The car is ready to return to the customer. Okay guys, is that just a cool diagnostics or what? You know, I always love when I've got to think about how I can run a test a different way to save my valuable diagnostic time. Guys, think about the test you're going to run. Think about how to do it. You know, I saved over three hours on this car because I didn't want to pull the, the intake and I could not find a known good cam and crank on this car anywhere. I looked for one and there isn't. So it's not like I can just go get a known good cam and crank because there wasn't one. But yet I diagnosed this car accurately and correctly as we can see. Use your brain guys, use a scope, use some pressure transducers. If you guys use a scope, you too can have good troubleshooting in your base.